Today we're continuing our death culture series and this one really will be worldwide. We're talking about the GRT communities, Gypsy, Roma and Traveller communities. There are a lot of stereotypes, discrimination and misinformation about these groups and they are some of the most persecuted groups in history. So allow me to explain who they are and let's see how they manage death in their communities. Before we begin, remember we post death and dying related content every Friday. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's talk death in GRT communities. Now if we were a culture based channel with a lot of funds behind us, we would happily do an hour long video on each of the GRT communities because they are fascinating. But we're not and we don't. So let's start with if you've watched any of the gypsy TV shows on the dumpster fire of a channel that is TLC, take that information and burn it. Remember us talking about cultivation theory in a past video where the media you consume slowly molds your mind into thinking that's the truth? Well that's a great example. But on to who these different groups are and they are different ethnic groups. Yes, they have similarities, but a gypsy is not a traveler and a traveler is not a Roma. There are also many, many subsets of each group. And while they are mainly based in Europe, they do live in other parts of the world as well. But we're going to explain it in the simplest way possible. So let's start at the top. Romani Gypsies. Romani Gypsies have been in Britain since at least 1515, after migrating to continental Europe during the Roma migration from India. The term gypsy comes from the word Egyptian, which is where the settled population of the time believed they had come from because of their dark complexion. In reality, linguistic analysis of the Romani language proves that Romani gypsies, like the European Roma, originally came from northern India, probably around the 12th century. To address the elephant in the room, since we've all been taught that the term gypsy is offensive, if you were to call a traveller or Roma person a gypsy, yes, that would be insulting. It'd be like calling a Canadian an American. They're just completely different groups. But mostly it is offensive because of the stereotyping and discrimination that comes with that term, as usually when someone using it, they're using it in a derogatory manner. But it should also be said that for the most part, the Romani gypsies in the UK identify as gypsy. That is their ethnic identity. And with respect to them, that is what I will refer to them to in this video. But like most things, it depends on the individual. Okay, onwards. Roma. The Roma and Romani Gypsies are believed to have both come from the same part of India, though it seems that the Roma left a century earlier in the 11th century. While Romani Gypsies continued to be nomadic around Western Europe, the Roma headed to Eastern Europe and very quickly took up a more settled, less nomadic life. So no, the Roma do not have that name because they came from Romania. They didn't. Yes, there are many Roma in Romania being Eastern Europe, but the similar names are just a coincidence. As for outside of Europe, it's interesting to know that we have around 5,000 Roma here in Australia. The US and Brazil have around 1 million. Canada has around 80,000. New Zealand has around 100. China around 9,000 and around 50,000 in the UAE. If you're wondering how Roma ended up in Australia of all places, well, it's the same way that a lot of our ancestors did. They were unwillingly shipped here as convicts from Britain. Traveller. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to look at Irish travellers here, but there are also Scottish and Welsh travellers. Firstly, the word traveller is a state imposed term, but many will still identify as a traveller and it's not necessarily considered offensive. But the more correct term would be these, which I have no hope in hell of being able to pronounce properly, but they're from the shelter language, the Irish traveller language. The origin of Irish travellers isn't really known and genetic testing shows that they have no similar origin to the Roma or Gypsy population. Many scientists and anthropologists believe that it's most likely they are descended from the community that lived in Ireland prior to the arrival of the Celts around 500 BC, or they were part of the Celts that broke away early when they first arrived and chose to be nomadic while the Celts settled down. GRT. So why are they all grouped together? Because individually they are very small groups, but all three have traditionally been nomadic and have faced the same intense discrimination, hence making anti-discrimination policies and the like by combining the groups makes it easier. While each has different traditions, cultures and histories, there are many similarities between the groups as well. Their culture tends to be very traditional and conservative with strong family ties and gender based roles. They tend to be religious, but also very superstitious. Self-employment is preferred traditionally in trades, craftsmanships and horses. 
Furthermore, the importance of cleanliness in these communities cannot be understated. And by that we mean the obvious sort. There must be no dirt or bacteria. There are strict codes and guidelines in place for how everything must be cleaned and how often. And keep this in mind as it will help to explain a lot of things that come up later. All three groups now have much more settled lifestyles than past generations. The Roma haven't roamed for centuries, but Romani gypsies and travellers have until quite recently. It is believed that around 80% now live permanently in houses. So while they still deal with massive amounts of discrimination, being sedentary has allowed for greater inclusion in education and employment and other parts of life where you need a permanent address. Now, onwards to the death and funeral part. Romani Gypsy Funerals As we said earlier, family means everything in the Gypsy community, and family and friends travel for miles to visit a person who is terminally ill or severely sick. When the person dies, they hold awake at night before the funeral, and generally they bring the deceased home for it, and there will be a constant flow of visitors paying their respects. Traditionally, close family members will wear black following the death of a family member, and will continue to do so for a year, though this is slowly changing. When a person dies, mourning becomes all-consuming, and it seems life for everyone is put on hold until they're buried. Until the funeral, family members are not supposed to bathe, shave, comb their hair, eat or drink anything besides coffee and brandy. Nor, above anything, are they supposed to touch the body. Doing so might risk supernatural contamination, and the less connection they have with the supernatural, the better. Gypsy funeral traditions are characterised by abundance. Enormous, full of relatives, public mourning and solemn ritual. Their burial rites amount to a massive procession taken very seriously by everyone involved. Their zeal may arise from the widespread belief in the supernatural. For the Romani Gypsy people, spirits must be warded off by spells and charms, and people can come back from the dead to wreak revenge on the living. Thus, when someone is dying, his or her family, all of whom knew the person and fear for their own lives, come back to stay by his or her side, ask for forgiveness, settle any strife, and leave a last good impression lest he or she return as a type of undead to settle last debts. Before the body of the deceased is taken to the cemetery, it will be taken past certain landmarks that have meant something to the person, stopping at each location to allow the deceased time to connect with that place, before finally arriving at their final resting place. Often there will be a small band leading the procession, and emotions are high and there's a lot of crying and wailing. However, for many gypsy communities, alcohol at a funeral is a no-go and seen as disrespectful to the deceased. For a traditionally nomadic community, the grave is the final and only resting place and the ultimate marker of the deceased. The cemetery will have traditionally been where other relatives have also been buried, and the family will have a long-standing history that will go back hundreds of years. And traditionally, photographs of the deceased would be buried with them, however this has changed over time and now photographs are often placed on the graves. They enable the family to connect with the spirit of their loved one, but also as a community, many of whom are illiterate, is a way of identifying the graves of family members and people from the community that they know. After the funeral, it was tradition for all the loved one's possessions to be burnt. Once again, the primary concern was supernatural contamination, and family members want to destroy all material ties to the dead. Today this is not really done, but close family will often sell the deceased possessions to get them out of the house that way. Traveller Funerals Much like the Romani Gypsy culture, family and friends of Irish travellers also travel for miles to visit a person who is terminally ill or sick. Travellers will call the priest to read the last rites and receive confession just before death and they will keep a visual and a candle lit near the bed by the dying person to light the way to the afterlife. These candles will be kept illuminated until after the funeral. This is because the Irish traveller community believes that in this situation, quote, God now lights the heavens to them. Irish travellers have a funeral service in a Catholic church. The casket will be opened the night before the funeral, and holy pictures, rosary beads, and sometimes prayers and jewellery will be placed in the coffin. Sometimes there is a mass the night before, and the family often have a wake the night before the funeral where family and friends come for food and drink. The following morning, the ceremony will take place at the church. The person's life story will be told by the priest or family member, and Irish songs are played. After church, which will have been a full mass, the hearse is taken by the deceased's favourite places, and this can take up to three hours. For example, the funeral party may go past the deceased's favourite pub, or stables, or home where songs are played. Following this, the deceased is taken to the cemetery, where the grave is blessed by a priest and leads the funeral party in saying the rosary. 
Death is not a comfortable topic within the traveler community and it is rarely openly spoken about. However, they have a deep respect for their deceased loved ones and maintain a strong connection with them after their past. For travelers, death does not mark the end. The spirit lives on and the gravesite is a place in which to grieve and show your respect for the deceased. Once the loved one has been buried, it is customary for the grave to be attended regularly by family and the grave to be impeccably kept. Some travelers will visit the grave on a daily basis, particularly if the death was sudden or the person was very young. And it's common for travelers to spend long periods of time at the gravesite talking to the deceased. Family will often keep a bench at the graveside, sometimes a marble bench, so they can sit and talk to the deceased and keep the connection with their spirit of their loved one going. Depending on where they died, Irish travellers will usually be taken back home to Ireland. The bodies of married couples are often buried side by side, signifying the commitment that they made in marriage that goes on into the afterlife. Within the Irish community, the family graves are blessed by a priest on a yearly basis. Possessions such as clothes, bedding, and the vehicle or trailer that they may have passed away in are traditionally burnt. This is done as a sign of respect for the deceased person, so their possessions can go with them into the afterlife and aid the spirit to leave the world for the next. However, unlike Romani Gypsy culture, things such as money, holy bracelets, tiny crosses, wedding rings, and photos of the immediate family are often placed in the coffin with the person to take them to the afterlife. The height of the headstone and colours used on it are extremely important in the traveller community. The larger the headstone, the greater the respect and love the family feel they can portray. Due to changes in regulations, many travellers now are forced to have smaller headstones and this can cause great distress. The shape of the headstone is also important. For example, a heart symbolises the families giving their heart to the deceased and may be used for a child or someone who has passed too early. The Bible tells the life story of the deceased and a cross acts as religious protection. Angels are used to guide the deceased through to the afterlife and the gates of heaven are there to allow the spirit to enter through into the heavens. These symbols are of vital importance to the loved ones and helps them with their grieving process in allowing the spirit to move on peacefully. Travellers can feel great shame if they are unable to have large headstones with their own specific requirements and will feel bad that they have not done their best for their loved one. Death is not accepted as the final end for travellers. The grave is a resting place and the person lives through these symbols and the things that they enjoyed. Memorabilia and objects that the deceased collected and enjoyed are kept by the graveside, but this often causes tensions with cemetery regulations. Without them, the grave may not feel like the person's resting place. They feel they do not own it and cannot connect with the deceased without memorabilia that represents them. Roma funerals. Again, family is everything to the Roma community, and when someone dies, people will come from far and wide to attend the funeral. When a person dies, the family plays loud, sad music, signaling that a death has occurred. Dancing and crying are common to show how heartbroken the family are, but that they're also happy that the deceased will now be able to enjoy the afterlife. The death of an elder or grandfather figure is viewed as a huge tragedy in the community because they are seen as advisors who all important decisions would go through. Thus, when one dies, it can easily directly impact over 100 people. It should also be noted that mourning, not just grief, extends for two-year period, and the Roma are known to commonly suffer from complex grief. When someone dies, traditionally men will not shave for 40 days, close family members do not shower for nine days after death because they don't want to wash away the touch of the deceased person's spirit. Mirrors are covered to prevent the spirit getting trapped, and the home is clean to ensure the spirit starts anew and fresh in the afterlife. The deceased is dressed in new clothes to appear refreshed before God and to be cleansed of their sins. Noting that the vast majority of Roma are Orthodox Christians, though there are small pockets of Muslim and Jewish Roma as well, but more so, they are superstitious in their beliefs. The funeral is held on the third day after death. The significance of the third day is because Jesus was dead for three days before rising. Traditional Roma food is cooked in abundance for funerals in the belief that the deceased can smell their favourite food and this helps their spirit elevate towards heaven. It is also believed that a Roma should never be alone. So if the deceased was young and had not yet married, often a doll is put into the coffin to substitute a bride or groom. This is so they won't be alone in the afterlife, but there is also the belief that if families do not include the doll, the spirit of the deceased will come back and claim a living bride, causing her death so they can be together. 
But the dolls are not only for the unmarried. In Roma culture, after someone passes away, he or she stays in the home for 24 hours, being watched over by the entire community that gathers to say goodbye. During this time, the Roma are very mindful of any changes in expression in the deceased. If the face contorts into a smile, then he or she is looking for a buddy. A close friend or relative is bound to follow soon. To prevent a smile, the Roma tie a cloth under the jaw and around the head of the deceased to prevent any sudden movements. However, even this doesn't work sometimes, so if the deceased smiles, a doll is put in the coffin just in case. It is then believed that on day 9 after the death, the dead person ends their earthly existence and their soul meets God for the first time. Day 40 brings the conclusion of the period that the soul has spent wandering the earth, visiting their family home and places that they loved, as well as their own grave. It should be noted here that the word grave is more akin to a burial chamber. The Roma dislike having coffins being placed directly in the earth where it would touch the soil. The size of the grave is also important and mainly consists of a burial area, kind of the size of a room. This room has concrete walls and floors and is often tiled. The coffin is placed in the chamber along with furniture, photos, sometimes even a TV or a bar with alcoholic drinks to ensure the deceased has a good afterlife. It is normal only for couples to be buried in the same chamber, but sometimes very young children may also be placed in the same chamber. And much like travellers, the Roma like to place expensive headstones on the grave with religious symbols as a sign of great respect for their loved ones. After the funeral, the family give away clothing and belongings of the deceased to extended family members and friends in the belief that by doing so they will ensure the dead person continues to live with them. The GRT cultures and histories are fascinating. And like I said, if we ever start a culture channel, that's definitely where I'm starting. All of the info in this video have come from this book and the many websites and journals published and produced by members of each of these communities. And I'll put all the links in the description should you want to take a look yourself. And with that, go talk death.